That video was taking place. I'm Rick Strom. That's Denise Jones. This video was taking place in Ethiopia. Now, the reason that this is important is because what we are going to show you throughout this story, throughout this piece rather, is that sports can be used as a positive for the greater good. Mm -hmm. So again, that video that you just saw took place in Ethiopia. And on top of that, Rebecca Root did great work here via DevX Shorthand Stories, who wrote, the 14 players that we just saw from very conflicted, war-torn nations, Congo, Sudan, Rwanda, Tanzania, Ethiopia, are among approximately 80 million people living with a disability in Africa. Many are marginalized from society, excluded from schools, denied opportunities to work. They take part in a two-week wheelchair basketball training run by the ICRC and the Ethiopian Basketball Federation. And Jess Marked, who we're gonna show you in a moment, it's incredibly common in developing countries and particularly countries dealing with conflict that people with disabilities tend to be the ones most forgotten, the ones most marginalized. Here is Jess in video form in Ethiopia. Of course, we want to teach people to be good wheelchair basketball players and give them kind of the, the confidence and the excitement that comes with part of being a team and becoming good at a sport. But also we see sport as a lever toward broader inclusion in the community. We've seen in multiple different countries where I've worked that the, the outcome of a player getting dedicated to a sport can often be that they're motivated and encouraged to go get an education, to get a job, to start a business, um, and find different ways to support themselves and their families. Just a moment, we are going to hear from one of those business owners who was there as well. But before I continue on, obviously, Sports not only brings people together, yes, there is, of course, two different teams, mm -hmm. and there is going to be the opposition, but it stays within the confines of the lines. I agree, and double, triple, quadruple down, that sports can be used as a vehicle for the greater good, not only in just a sporting context, but also in a life context, mm -hmm. in a business context to include many others, for others who may not have the confidence to then use that and apply it to their day-to-day -day operations as a person of society, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's why, you know, we encourage kids to take on a sport because it adds character. You can tell the difference between someone who didn't play a sport or an organized sport growing up and someone who did. Um, it just adds a level of maturity, motivation. You have the teamwork ability already. You know what unity brings and the power of it. Um, and even if it's an individual sport, you know leadership. You know what it is to motivate yourself. You know what it is that you have to do. You have to yeah. create a plan and, and workouts and stuff like that. So I can see this absolutely working out with adults and, and different leagues across the country. Very or much not so. across the country, but all over the world. Yes, absolutely. And we're actually going to show two more stops in the world that is trying to just change the narrative that unfortunately people have on PWDs. So Rebecca Root, again, great work here, because I had no idea that this existed. Yeah, I did it. I'm glad it does. Yeah, I'm, I'm, well, I'm glad that that does, but this is more of, a, more of like the history of Africa and how they view PWDs. Mm -hmm. In order for people to move towards increased inclusion into society, any stigma needs to be tackled. In some parts of rural Africa, for example, such stigma is deep-rooted, stemming from the belief that disabilities are a result of supernatural occurrences, witchcraft, or divine intervention. Interesting. I mean, it, it's unfortunately just goes with it, the, the fact that it's in another country yeah. and they, they don't have the educational resources. So Right. Well, that's why they're trying to do this. Mm -hmm. So I salute all of them. So now we make another stop, and this is in New Guinea. Mm. where they are also trying to help out as much as they can. More than 100 people gathered in Papadenda town in New Guinea, calling for greater recognition of sports as a platform for social inclusion and development of the potential of young persons with disabilities as part of International Disability Day celebrations in the Northern Province. The International Disability Convention recognizes the rights of PWDs to participate in cultural life, recreation, and sport. I mean, these are such simple things. The National Disability Policy calls on government and all parties to increase the number and quality of disability 
sports programs in the community. John Rorio doing great work here. So much money is poured into certain sporting codes with no consideration for young athletes with disabilities. There must be equal distribution of funds for para sports and sports development programs for children with disabilities. Again, this is fantastic stuff that he is doing because we're trying to rewrite the psyche of many people who just jump to a conclusion that is flat out wrong. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. Um, so lastly, and then we'll get Denise's take on this. We now go to Australia, and this is a very great story of inclusion. Melbourne's wheelchair wakeboarding is making extreme sport possible, is what ABC ended up writing. You can follow it at abc.net.au. Robbie Pime said, when I had my accident, all I was thinking about was all the things I can't do. But I do more now than I ever did prior to my accident. It's just a different way. So Ian Clark is someone who opened up the first cable park 18 months ago. It wasn't until we received a letter asking about accessibility that he looked into the possibility of offering wheelchair wakeboarding. Here that is in video form at this park. Take a look. So it's funny because obviously when we play a video, you don't hear our audio. Denise goes, that has to give them a confidence boost. Right on cue is the quote about, man, it really gives them a confidence boost. So basically what we're trying to show here is I understand where a lot of people will not grasp, grasp the fact that some of the things that they have set up like a park like mm. this is not suitable for people who are in wheelchairs mm -hmm. or a few others. Yet all it takes is just a little bit of care and a little bit of time and it'll make not only the best for the greater good, but also you will be you will feel self-fulfilled and you will also put a smile on someone's face who probably would leave with a frown. Absolutely. And then the fact that going back to his quote when he said that, you know, when I had my injury, I was thinking of all the things that I can't do. One thing that sports teaches you is you're going to get injured. That's inevitable. Like it's it might be a it might not be a drastic injury, but you're going to get injured, you're going to get hurt, and there's a way to come back from it. And even if it's not necessarily in the position that you were initially playing, there's another position open for you. Like it's, mm -hmm. it sport keeps you so open-minded and so full of hope with opportunity that I can see this absolutely giving you the confidence to just explore something completely different. No doubt about it. So let us know your thoughts. We appreciate everybody watching. We'll see you next time. You know what's my favorite song? You can ring my bell. So do it, why don't you? Ring the damn bell and download the TYT app. Available on Android and iOS.